Now that we've seen how Bezier curves behave geometrically, let's take a look at the algebra, starting with a three-point polygon. As before, we construct a point Q using linear interpolation, that is, a weighted average on the line segment AB. Algebraically, Q can be written as Q equals 1 minus T times A plus T times B. Next, we construct a point R on the line segment BC, which means that R can be written as R equals 1 minus T times B plus T times C. Finally, we connect Q and R and do one final linear interpolation to get P, our point on the curve. P equals 1 minus T times Q plus T times R. From this last equation, it kind of looks like P is degree 1 in T. But the first two equations also depend on T. So let's substitute the first two equations into the third to get this combined expression. Multiplying out the terms and collecting, I can rewrite P as P equals 1 minus T squared times A plus 2T times 1 minus T times B plus T squared times C. All those squared terms show us that P is actually a degree 2 polynomial. Interesting, a three-point polygon leads to a degree 2 polynomial. That kind of makes sense because we did two stages of linear interpolation. In the first stage, we computed Q and R, and in the second stage, we computed P. Now, what happens to the degree if we start with a four-point polygon? Can you guess? In the first stage, I compute three points using linear interpolation. In the second stage, I compute two points, and in the third stage, I compute one point. Since I have three stages, the resulting curve will be degree 3. That means a four-point polygon results in a degree 3 curve. You can generalize to Castle-Joe's algorithm to start with 5, 6, or any number of points. The rule is, if we start with n points, you get a polynomial of degree n minus 1. Pretty neat. And congratulations on finishing this lesson. If you're feeling particularly bold, try your hand at the following bonus challenge.